what is up y'all um this is super late so i originally meant to record this um back in uh the start of april pretty much i meant to op uh, record this around the time that everyone was putting their um pretty much their sandings out uh so i wrote it on my ipad actually and i just never recorded it because i'm lazy um i did it on the fourth uh let's see yeah so i did it on the fourth and i can even prove it too all right about right here huh fourth so without further ado i figured might as well at least post my standings um about a month into the season too so let's get it started so my teams are on the west coast so we're gonna start with the east coast work our way down so in the l uh and the in the al east we have in fifth place to no shocker baltimore and i also before we even get started to further on these are my standings before a month into the season. So it's kind of crazy to see where everything is at so far, given what I have as my standings back then. And I kind of want to do this maybe either month, every month, or um, maybe uh, half a year. But back to the actual standings itself. In fifth place is Baltimore, followed by fourth place, New York, the New York Yankees in fourth, and I will probably get a lot of shit for that because they're one of the best teams right now. Uh, in third place, Tampa Bay, and I want I kind of still feel like I'm I'm willing to die on. I feel like Tampa is gonna have a regression this year. Oh my god, this sticker sucks. I can't pull away on it. Uh, followed by Boston in second place. I don't have projected scores or anything but i definitely just want to do placements winning the al east is the blue jays the canada boys toronto and that i still stand on i am willing to die on that one the nl east and this one's crazy given how everything looks right now washington coming in fifth we got the nets got that natitude that it's not enough to get you out of fifth place in fourth place is the fish. It's the Marlins. And I, looking back on this, um, I'm willing to stick with it, but I really hope that the Marlins just stir some stuff up this year and just somehow not be in fourth place team. Followed by the third place team, it's the Philadelphia Phillies. I do really want them to make the postseason. I really want the Phillies to be good. It's just really hard because they seem to just implode on themselves. And this is speaking last year. And if we look at the the Phillies so far one month in, it's kind of still true. They have a lot of work to do. So hopefully they can start making some trades. I don't know how they'll do it with no depth, but we'll see. Followed by that, drum roll. Ooh, who's going to be in second place in the NL East? As a Mets, I, the Mets are so hot right now. I know one month into the season, but I still have the Braves winning the NLEs. Until the Mets can do it, it's gonna be the Phillies. If you look at last year, the the Mets were in what first place for like a hundred days of the season, hundred and six days, and got third, fourth place. They, like it, it was kind of embarrassing. Like I, it was almost like. It was too hard for the. It was hard, easy for them to lose games, and it was for them to win games. It was really weird. It's just bizarre. It all happened after the All Star break. All right, moving on to what I feel is the most unbalanced and hardest. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Moving on to what I feel is the most unbalanced and a crapshoot for a division, and it's the AL Central. The AL Central has some of the most uh, interesting teams. You know, you have Kansas, you have the Sox, you have the, T the Twins, Guardians, you have Detroit. Any of them could be really hot. The next could be really shitty. It's really weird. But in the order that I have it is I have Kansas City in fifth place, which just makes sense. Everyone's kind of 
they're still kind of figuring things out, figuring out pieces. I really don't know when they're going to be competitive, to be honest, but Kansas City is coming in fifth, followed by Detroit. Now, it's cool that Torkelson finally got the call up. He's playing. Um, but they still have they still got Cabrera. And they arguably have one of the worst parks to hit homers in, or at least try to hit the long ball with how far the outfield is and how long it is. Um, yeah, I just have Detroit in in that fourth place spot followed by the Guardians and like I said this is done in April 3rd and the standings look completely different right now than what I'm going where I, where I, compared to what I have projected but I kind of still want to stick to it but we'll see followed by the sh ah, the Minnesota Twins Minnesota Twins take second place but I wouldn't be surprised if they win a division it would not shock me if they win a division. Just how with the Mets, until it's not Atlanta, it's Atlanta. So until it's not White Sox, it's the Twins. But for now, I got Chicago up top. All right, moving on to the NL Central. And this one's a funny one because I feel like compared for what I have right now, it's all a crapshoot too. Coming in fifth place, I have the... No. Nope. I got the Pirates. And surprisingly, the Pirates are not in fifth place and probably will not be in fifth place. Shockingly. Followed by that is your Cincinnati Reds turning red because your team fucking sucks. I'm not even going to spend time on that. Followed by the St. Louis Cardinals. And this one's, they're kind of a weird team because they're not bad, but they're not good. They're contenders for the postseason but I wouldn't say they're contenders for the World Series. It's just a bizarre team all around. I don't watch enough Cardinals. I don't really like Cardinals. I mean I don't really hate the Cardinals but as a Dodger fan I feel like I shouldn't like the Cardinals. Um, moving on to that and this one was where I really need to emphasize that the NL Central is kind of a crapshoot because of how kind of mediocre bad they are is the Cubs. And I still want to stick by this. I have this weird feeling that the Cubs are going to be competitive this year. I know the standings don't match it compared to when, when I'm filming this. Today is the 8th. But, I don't know. There's something about the Cubs. It's like, I know they can be good. It just has... They just have to get lucky. And that sounds really dumb. But if you look at the Cardinals last year, the Cardinals were bad last year. They were in 3rd, maybe 4th place at some point. And they somehow finish in second and snag the wild card. There's so many wild card teams now this year. Like I think the Cubs can do it. I don't know what it is. I, they, I don't know what it is. Followed by your NL Central winners, the Milwaukee Brewers, with the four-headed horseman. Wait, <laughs> your four-headed henchman, whatever you want to use. You got Hauser, you got Peralta, you got Burns, you got Woodruff, and you got just arguably just a mess of a pitching like power powerhouse you got fucking Devin you got um Hayter it's just a lot there's a lot of stuff Hauser's still there Ashby I don't want to talk about teams in too too much depth but I can do that later moving on to the AL West and this one is where it's getting kind of funny because in fifth place I got your Oakland A's now, I don't know if I want to stick to that. I feel like I should, but I don't want to. But we'll see. Followed by your Texas Rangers. Coming in fourth place. Spent a lot of money, so we'll see how it goes up, goes on for them. Corey has been hot. Marcus has been not. Followed by third place in the AL West. And this is where I'm probably a little biased. But... And I'm going to look really, really, really dumb for saying this, but the Angels in third place. And like I said, just like the Mets, they spent so much time in first place, only to get, what, third, fourth place? So anything can happen. But one month of the season, I look really stupid, and I look like I'm going to about to lose 100 bucks because I bet against them. Um, followed by your Seattle Mariners who are in third place right now. Guys, let's, what are we doing? Let's win some games. They called up George Kirby though, so we're good. Logan Gilbert's been looking hot. 
Ray has not been looking so hot lately. What's up with all these lefties, man? Like, all the lefties we have have not been hot. Gonzalez has been unlucky. Oh, man. Ray has not been, like, he's a dog. He pitches. He, he goes deep into games, but sometimes it just comes back to bite him. Um, we'll see what happens, but he's at, he's at a 5 yard right now. It's not looking too pretty for him. Um, and uh, as the winner of the AL West, it's still the Strohs. Uh, as a Dodger fan, I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon and be like, oh, they're fucking so like, oh, the trash cans. They're good. If we just stop thinking about what happened a couple years back, they're still good. They're arguably very good. They got Pena at, sh at shortstop, which, jeez, do you guys even remember Carlos Correa left your team? Pena's the future. I have him as my rookie of the year. I know I sound fucking crazy given that. There's a guy named Rodriguez on the Mariners who is arguably a really like good dude, good dude too. But I just something about Pena, bro. I I don't know. I'll revisit that as well. Um, moving on to the NLS, arguably a pretty interesting division given that they're all above 500. Are they still above 500? That's a good question. Thank you for asking, audience. No problem. Let's check the gold uh, MLB app. Let's see what we get. Standings. Currently, every team in the NL West is above 500. There is currently no division right now where every team is above 500. Arguably, one of the most solid teams. So we will see how they fare out. With that said, in last place is the Colorado Diamondbacks. And I'm not looking too bad on that one. But... The Diamondbacks aren't going to be bad this year. The Diamondbacks are going to have good pitching. It doesn't look so good right now, but the Diamondbacks are going to have one of the best pitching in the league. They're going to be a top 10 pitching factory. I'm putting this on a video. Top 10 pitching factory. I don't care what anybody says. They're going to be a top 10 pitching factory. In fourth place, we have your Colorado Rockies. And I have them in fourth, but I do still feel like they were going to be kind of good. They were showing some flashes last year. Very good at home. No one really understands why, but I think that's going to be like helpful again for them. In third place, the little brother to everyone, the San Diego Padres. I want to also say, I feel like the Padres are going to get hot and actually play to where they should be this year. I'm going to give them credit. Um... I'm kind of glad they finally got Mackenzie Gore because he's kind of like what Kershaw was back then. Just kind of reminds me of Kershaw a bit, just that power lefty. Um, but I feel like Machado's going to be in top three again for Cy Young. Cy Young, sorry. Machado's going to be in top three for MVP. Arguably, it just doesn't even feel like you need Tatis anymore, which is insane to say because Tatis is like you guys' MVP. But it's almost like, do you guys even really need Tatis? Maybe. Who's to say? Now moving on to second place. And this isn't me being biased. This is me being factual. Because I feel like this is just going to happen. Come on, guys. It's the Giants. Giants are in second place team with your first place division winner. Back to the basics, the Dodgers. I'm not even going to get into it right now. But I do kind of want to make another video later on. Breaking down um, this whole list. With that being said... That's all I got. I'm out.